It is the morning of April the 15th, 2016. I'm Dana Durnford, your host, the nuclear proctologist.org, and you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations throughout the entire internet. And we are very grateful that that is throughout the internet. The government made me take down 300 of my videos several months ago and had me charged with a crime I didn't commit in order to demonize me and vilify me in the media. And so the videos are still on the internet and I can't refer you to them because that would be breaking my probation. And I'm not the bad guy. I'm not the guy I was telling everybody it was like natural radiation. I was the guy who said, hey, that's a lie. And we got to stop the lawyers because that is the way society works. We stop the lawyers. You know, if someone's lying in the media and everybody gets out there and finds out it's a lie, then what, what happens? They're discredited and then nobody wants anything to do with them anymore. And they got to go hide in their little cave. And so, just a quick touch for a minute. This is the lie that they tell you all the time. Look at your bottom paragraph. Those series, they're talking about Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, nuclear weapons, and Fukushima in the paragraphs above it. Look at the bottom paragraph. Those series, these totals pale compared to the abundance of radioactive substances naturally present in seawater such as uranium-238 and potassium-40. Now, these are natural stuff that can't hurt you. It's irrelevant. No one cares about them. It is harmless, stupid, everyday background radiation. But the diagram in your right hand side, bottom right hand side, potassium 40 would produce, has, there's around 15 million petabecquels. Okay. Well, 15 million petabecquels of potassium 40 is equal to 70 pounds. Seven zero pounds of man made. Because a gram of man made produces 88 curries, 88 times 37 billion. And a gram of man-made man is 0 0.0000, 000, five zeros, seven one, seventy one, ten millions of a curry. Not of 88 curries, but of a curry. And there's 88 curries of man-made in a gram, in a gram, the size, which is a million watts. But nature doesn't have a million watts in theirs at all. It's just 262,700 atoms. But they're not harmful atoms. They're irrelevant. No one cares about them. And, and, but these particles are very big, these potassium particles, compared to man-made particles. You see? Yeah? And if you were equivalent sizes, then it would be a death sentence immediately to get a man-made the same size as potassium. But potassium is harmless, good for you. Your body regulates it, your body can't get any more potassium. But it can, it can hang on to everything man-made that comes at you. And that'll cause different cancers, leukemias, and diseases. Long before the cancer shows up, there's 1,800 these diseases associated with it. But this is the machine below that all the nuclear spin machines, and we're going to talk about the earthquake right away, but this is the PR spin machine you see below. That's their whole narrative. It's right there. It's one great, big, stupid, idiotic, moronic, easy provable law, and we proved it over and over and over. But they've been doing it for 70 years. And so most people don't understand it's not like a banana, it's not like a potato chip, it's not like walking in the sunshine, getting on an airplane, sleeping next to somebody, blah, blah. All this stupid stuff that is natural. No one cares about it. Do you run away every time you see a banana or a potato chip? Are you afraid to walk in the sunshine? When a single atom from a nuclear power plant can give you cancer, why worry about the other one? Let's come in and say hi to everybody. Good morning, everyone. I'll get you plugged in. Haha. <laughs> Bring up camera two, Dina. Morning, Kate, and Spurl, and Thirst, and Checks and Balance, L.A., and Kathy, Kathy, and John. Good morning, everybody. Nep Killer, Just Crozen, and Kevin, and PLT. You got here at the end of the show yesterday. I seen your comment. It was too late to comment. Good morning, Adam. Yar. And Elaine and Jan Brooks and Candace and everybody else, Mickey and you name them, running around out there. Good morning, everybody. And Japan had a brutal, incredible, unimaginable. I'm sure I got everybody that time. Japan had a brutal earthquake. 
I can turn that audio. It's still on. I can play. Uh, this is uh, Jan Brooks's video from Miss Milky the Clown. Hello there. Welcome to NHK Newsline. It is Friday, April fifteenth, ten a.m. in Japan. Tens of thousands of people in southwestern Japan have fled their homes after a powerful earthquake. At least nine people have been confirmed dead. More than 950 others are injured, and the aftershocks continue. The magnitude 6.5 quake hit Kumamoto Prefecture Thursday night. Officials say more than 44,000 people have fled since. Now, it goes on and on, but the point I'm trying to make here, and, and Missing Sky's got a great video up there too about the earthquake, a really nice one. What you got to realize with that earthquake, let's bring up um, this earthquake this was CNN 6.2 there's like different spots all around the, the zone there's been 120 aftershocks some as strong as the original earthquake now ENE News is reporting from major uh, media in Asia that Japan is using their new scale, their new seismic scale, which is a 7. It doesn't go to 10, it goes to 7. And some places in Japan, on the south end of Japan, on the, of the island, which is a thousand kilometers away from Tokyo, Tokyo felt it. It was felt in South Korea, in the southeast side of Korea. They were rocking down there. But Tokyo, the buildings were rocking. And so the original reports coming out, uh, the NRC in Japan ran out and told everybody, oh no, you know, there's, the plants are running normal, there's no abnormalities. Well, that don't mean jack shit. For starters, it was nighttime, you had a skeleton crew on. And so how would you know if any pipes were broken until the, the damage showed up later? When it's the, and now Sendai has a MOX facility running, right? That's a MOX. A Sendai. It shook the buildings a thousand miles away. Now we find out a thousand people who are injured. Now we find out that the uh, highways were torn apart for just incredible stretches. Huge chunks are closed. The country was shifted four or five or six feet. And that this was equated as powerful as the 2011 earthquake. And that's not... Uh, now, they keep saying no tsunami was issued because it was right on their land. They don't bother telling you that part. They always like to throw that out there so everybody goes back to sleep. Not everybody, but a chunk of them will go back to sleep. Oh, no tsunami, nothing to worry about. See, you can see where the base of it is right now at a city, a big major city, 750,000 people. So all the focus is on that. But if you look at the wider spectrum, of 120 aftershocks, many of them were over six, and which is serious. This is friggin' serious. A six is serious. Many of them, but when we're talking about a six out of seven, we're not talking about a six out of ten. We're talking about a scale of seven. And so the nuclear power plants to come out and say that they were okay, and they're still running. There's only a couple down there. You got to reconsider that. There's also fuel pools stored on these sites. There's common spent fuel pools stored on these sites. You gotta remember these reactors are, are most likely running on around five million pounds. And so every two years they took that out and either put it on the roof or put it in a on-site storage pool. And if they were damaged, that is no different than a running reactor going down. You can shut down every nu nuclear reactor on the planet, but when you have an earthquake, you still have to have huge fears that something happened to the pole and you can't get power in there. Because within 24 hours, you've got a meltdown going on and you can't get in there to get near the other poles and try to salvage them without sacrificing people. Nuclear is built up on sacrifices and predicated upon lies like bananas and potato chips and walking in the sunshine. Now, the earthquake is devastating. In, in the immediate effects of an earthquake, the damage is visual. You can't see radiation or smell it or touch it or feel it or hear it or pick it up. But you can pick it up by breathing it in. You can pick it up by getting it on your clothing. You can pick it up by having it in your food or your water or on your vehicle or on your toys for your children or on your handrails. But you can't see it to pick it up. 
to get rid of it, but you can pick it up and sequester it. Um, now, these particles are so small they can get to, through your receptors. These are one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And I have great fears because just because a running power plant is 100 miles away, storage facilities are all around that area. Nuclear waste is all over that place. And that 70 pounds create more atoms than all the natural atoms in the ocean. And that a pound of this stuff, atomized and aerosol, is enough atoms to kill every animal and human on the planet in increments over time. Because cancer takes a long time to manifest, to diagnose, and, but your body attacks it for decades normally if you only got a small amount. If you only got a single atom in your body, your body attacks that relentlessly for the next couple of decades and builds a sarcophagus, a tumor, and we call it a tumor, but it builds a sarcophagus around it to contain, because the radiation will beat right out of your body. Man-made, natural stuff doesn't do that. Natural stuff can only travel one ten thousandth, a millionth of a millimeter. Man-made stuff will travel out your body and into somebody else. And then it'll wreck all your chromosomes and DNA at the same time. Natural doesn't do that. Natural is so weak and so benign. And so, it's throughout the solar system, it's the same. Natural stuff, there's about 160 of them. And there's around 2,000 man-made stuff. We kind of lost track of what I wanted to show you here. Let's keep moving, rock and rolling. Or did I lose track? Hang on. So here you got CNN. This guy here is a meteorologist. And then they bring him up for all kinds of stuff where he and, and this dizzy witch here, they inject her. Now look at this. 756,000 were in a violent or a severe quake. Wait a second. This was a 7 out of a 7 scale. This was extreme. This is 40,000 people won't even go back into their houses. That lived out on, in, a, in a field all night rather than go anywhere in any building. That's not extreme. That's not violent. What about all the people who died? Did they not suffer violence? What about, and you knew that, you talk about that in the show. But that's your media. The media didn't bother telling you that the scale that they're talking about, a 6.2, is based upon a 7 scale for that particular town. But some places there were 7 out of a 7. Out of a 7. So this earthquake was just as bad as the one that happened uh, in 2011, except it didn't have a tidal wave. So that means it was traveling at 9,000 miles per hour. That means it shook the country for minutes. That would also mean that people couldn't stand up. And we got all of these reports. It was felt in Tokyo where it rocked buildings. It was felt in South Korea. There's 120 aftershocks. They're still warning people for the next week there could be aftershocks just as strong as a 7 out of a 7 that broke roads and buildings and dropped uh, structures that have been there from the 15th century that have been reinforced that have been hardened that have been updated that have had tens of millions of dollars spent on them still crumble but all the nuclear waste sites and nuclear power plants and the current running power plant in Sendai with Mox Fuel no no worries well nothing happened on the gauge Dana well you could have broke lines you could have other aftershocks coming right behind it and take out the power supply. Why not take that opportunity and shut down the power plant for a week until the aftershocks come to a stop because then you have to admit that nuclear plants can be affected by earthquakes. And you don't care about people. Look what you've done to the rest of Japan already with nuclear fallout. Look how you come out and berated the mothers for being concerned about their children being emaciated and not being able to sleep and throwing up and having nosebleeds for months nonstop and living in environments with a million becquels a square meter and telling them that they're having phobia fears and telling them they're hurting their children. When these people are thugs, these people are morons, they got the job because they're thugs. Just like the guys, people you see in front of me on that, these are despicable people. But nobody was in a violent, yet all kinds of people died and a thousand people injured and they just sent in 3,000 troops but it's no big deal. So to me, that's a big deal. To me, that means they're up to something. And whatever that is, I can assure you it's not going to be any good. Good morning, everyone.
let's switch gears. But the earthquake is a serious event. Let's bring up the camera one. <coughs> what have we got today, Dana? We just done that, Dana. Yeah, and the pedibac wall is um, 27,027 curries, and each curry is, in man-made, is 87, 88 times 37 billion. In nature, it's 71 ten millionths of a single uh, curry, which is 37 billion. And man-made per gram, per gram, has 88. That's because it takes 400 train car loads to get a gram. 400 train car loads of chemicals, a million gallons of water mixed together to create the toxic sludge that sits there and evaporates into your communities and everywhere else. And it's abandoned, like 15,000 abandoned mines, just like I told you that time. Because they need 400 train car loads to get a gram. If it's a rich area. If it's not, they need 800 train car loads. They have to use toxic chemicals and everything else. So there's a huge difference in potassium per curry, 262,700. Versus man-made per gram, 3.2 trillion atoms, ionizing dirty bombs. But government delayed level 7 rating to ease people into the harshness of reality is what we see going on with that earthquake in Japan right now. For March the 15th, or April the 15th, 2016. So Fukushima, Japan... I'll bring up the big screen. Yank. Yank. And so f had a 9.0 earthquake originally. That's when they used a scale of 10. But this earthquake now that they had last night and 120 aftershocks after, many of them almost as powerful, are just as powerful as that 9.0 because the scale now they're using is a 7. And some places was a 7 out of 7. Some places was a 7.1 out of a 7. But this, uh, in 2011, they had a tsunami. This swept through nuclear power plants, not just this one at the Fukushima Daiichi Military Industrial Complexes for Directed Energy Weapons Production Facility, where they use isotopes to make lasers, sophisticated uh, directed energy weapons devices, because you need so much power, lithium won't work, see? Isotopes do, though. As we know, a gram can have a million watts. And if you want a million watt, um, laser gun, you're going to need a gram of that stuff to get a million watts, yeah? Okay. They blow up, melt it down. This is unit one, 100% meltdown, 100% melt through, 100% melt out. They lost the entire inventory of the fuel pools, which are all the reactor cores for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Because they store all the pools, all the reactors on site. See, it doesn't just turn to something else when it's taken out of the reactor. Now it's a reactor core that's used, it, but people call it a used fuel pool. But they got to store it for millions of years, billions of years, because it's not, you just can't use it for the chain reaction to directed energy isotopes anymore. And power is just a byproduct of the chain reaction. That's unit two. That's unit three. That's unit four. In Japan. And they told you how unit four looked like that. And they wrote out Set Dorn. Set Dorn said he was inside of place here Unit 4. But yet we know Unit 4 doesn't look like that. It looks like that. And we know that they tore it all off. Right? Because it used to look like that. They tore it all off. It looked like that. You see that red truck to the left-hand side? That's that truck there. They brought it in on the world's biggest plane. And the pump water in. Because the roof looked like that. No, because the roof looked like that. And it doesn't look like that because they took it all off. And they used homeless and destitute and immigrants to do it. You won't see Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or Stanford or MIT or Oxford. These are meltdowns, melt-throughs, melt-outs. We know if they don't get power being restored. This was March the 18th. And then what did the media tell you about getting power? If they lose power to those... Uh, to, to that reactor or to any other reactors uh, past a few hours from now, uh, you might reach a Three Mile Island. Now, Three Mile Island, Three Mile Island, 
there was a 64% increase in cancer. And the author of that study blamed it on radiophobia, on stress. But there was a 64% increase of cow, a cow cancer in just one study. There was another study showed over 200,000 people. Now, uh, 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 if the power at any of the storage facilities around that earthquake today, and hang on, here we go. It's the wrong one. Come on! A possible tsunami was the immediate threat here in BC. Now, for hours, a core map. In the long term, it'll come to us. The danger depends on what happens in Japan. If the cooling systems aren't repaired within 24 hours, a core meltdown is a risk. The worst case is a... Right, it is, is a risk. Well, it, that's what happened, right? I'm going to turn that volume down a little. Let's show, just so. Next time I play it, don't rattle us. Okay. All right. Um... Yeah, we got one more clip for you here. This Following the accident at the Fukushima plant, the Italian government is now freezing plans to build new nuclear power plants in the country. Earlier, the government had announced a one-year... So it wasn't just Germany, Italian also stopped the nuclear power plants, right? They were dumping uh, their waste off Somalia. That's why Somalia dissented into piracy was because uh, Italy and other countries we're giving the mob nuclear waste in, in ships and they go scuttle it on their coastline and nobody could eat the fish because it was so poison. And so they were so angry they started going out and jacking all the boats coming along the coastline. That's what happened. It was to kill the industry. It was a crazy good fishing industry down there. And they, they destroyed it with nuclear waste, dumping it over there rather than Italy creating, trying to create a sarcophagus, because you can't create a sarcophagus, right? And, like, if you want real context, think about what Harvard said on March the 16th, 2011, about Fukushima. Uh, firstly, uh, units one through three are suffering core damage accidents, and perhaps Spent fuel pool accidents as Wait well. The spent fuel pool is located at the top of the reactor building, uh, which in each case is, is damaged. Units. Hang on. At the top of each reactor building, look at the one in your bottom left-hand corner, there is no top. Look at the one in your bottom right-hand corner, there is no top. Look at the one in the top left-hand corner, there is no top. And look at the one in your right-hand corner. These are pictures I put there. That's 100% confirmed gone also. So they're all gone. So it's not just reactors in each building, it's all the reactor cores that were on the roof. These are reactors too, see? One and three, in, in fact, destroyed at that. In fact, destroyed. Location. You can see how meek he is and humble he is when he's saying all of that. This was uh, four days after, but here's the University of Victoria was out there telling you there was no melted reactors Woods Hole at the same time, f for a while, was telling you there was no melted reactors. But we had Harvard, we have MIT. I'd like to welcome our own students from Nuclear Science. And, and then we have Stanford. We have the NRC. And then We're we have... We're here to get a briefing on the ongoing crisis associated with the nuclear power plants in Japan. I'm Here's very privileged that we have the executive director for operations at the NRC here, Bill Borchardt. I couldn't speculate on that. And now, I put that clip that way, for Bill Borchardt, because he, you know, I couldn't play the whole one hour or two hour NRC. But I wanted people to, I wanted to be able to, to show you what he was like. Here she was, she had put him on a pedestal and said he's an expert, he's from the NRC, he's the man to ask the question to, we got him here in front of us at Senate, on TV, we're here to help you out, America, and he said, well, I rather not. Every time she asked him a, a question about how far should people evacuate if there was an accident, oh, I don't want to comment on that, I don't want to comment on this, don't want to comment on that. But he's the guy that's supposed to comment on that, he's the guy that you're paying the money for the NRC, he works for you. 
but yet he will not comment on that. But ultimately, because I chopped that particular, there's another one I chopped up, was this one here. What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage uh, in... A significant amount of fuel damage. You can't have a tiny bit. It's all gone, see? In the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in unit four right. of that... Unit four. Let's look at unit four one more time. And that's why we have to do this all day, every day, because nobody else will do what I'm doing. No one will show you this and, and make you understand that unit four doesn't exist. Anybody told you it did is, is a lying sack of shit or an idiot or was manipulated. Not everybody's bad. But if you've got an education, you know better than you're bad. And no amount of good can change the bad. No amount of good can reverse the bad. Without coming out and telling you were telling the truth that you you were manipulative and you lied and that you knew the difference, maybe then you can be forgiven. But to ignore the significance of what I'm showing you, to turn your back on what I'm saying to you, to not push as hard as you can every day for why we have to, because the law is so big. See, Seth Dorn says he's inside of that building. Look at it. Look at your left hand side on the bottom. Is, do you think there's anything inside that never came out? Look at the building. Look at it. Okay. Set Dorn. Of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. That was PBS where he went to Reactor 4. They done a whole one hour documentary on it. And that's a clip I, sh I cut out. Then he says, like a dental x ray. Now, he's not inside of that building. But yet, he's saying he's inside of this building. And he's showing you a symmetrical, wonderful, incredible building. And nobody's going to hold him accountable. He's allowed to continue to, to be on TV. He's allowed to continue. CBS and PBS are allowed to continue to be funded. They're saying they're inside of that. And that is Wonder Bros. No big deal. Work Look at him. Place here He's handed out reactor here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. Checked for mental health hours, issues. Put in a... Of less than a chest I had to give you the nuclear proctologist special. Look. Let's keep going. Uh, I gotta hang on a second because I gotta import material for the day that I don't have here for some reason. And I already imported it. I can't find it. We're almost there. La 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 la, almost. Do you know? Get your act together. Okay, all right. Here we go. Let's hope that shows up. Testing one, two, three, four. <laughs> Why is Japan allowed to get the last sentence? Why is Japan allowed to get away with contaminating the ocean? September the 8th, 2013. Where are there not other efforts from other countries involved here? Because they're all in on that hoax because the nuclear industry is so powerful. Because a one black eye on a nuclear industry anywhere is a black eye on a nuclear industry everywhere. And then if their lies get exposed, they can't look their families in the face. They can't look their friends in the face. They can't look their neighbors in the face. They can't look anybody in the face. That's why they got double tinted windows in all their vehicles because they're afraid someone's going to recognize them as it is. We're talking about nuclear scientists, nuclear, nuclear academics, nuclear institutions. The people that are killing the dogs and the animals with nuclear waste, like Dr. Gilmetty from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, 94 studies, 94 studies, I'm going to bring that up another way, 94 studies, curium isotopes are a major byproduct, not cesium, not iodine. Okay, and then Study after study, he's got 94 of them killing dogs and puppies. 
Do you think I'm kidding you? Do you think I'm making this up? 144 Beagle Dogs. And this will get re-uploaded at Beautiful Girl by Dana in 1080, very high quality for the internet. I can do six times better quality than what I've been posting the last couple of days, but it's a 100 gigabyte file. Take me a week with the bandwidth I got to, to upload it. It's too bad. That's why I say if I had them, if I raised enough money to get a, a proper connection and building, I need I need to be, I'm 10 miles outside of town, but if I had a connect, if I was had an office in town with high quality internet and the equipment that I need and a small staff, who 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 that's coming down the road because we got no choice. Let's keep uh, rocking. Uh, just a reminder. Look at that. Tumors of the lung skeleton. Third sentence. Liver. Liver occurred beginning. I'm watching three screens at about three years after exposure. And bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the second most, or were the most common of burping at the same time now. Slow it down, Dina. Lung tumors found in 46 dogs, second most common. Liver tumors. But what they discovered by that study, look at the bottom two sentences. These findings in dogs suggest a similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans exposed from Fukushima. That's what they're literally telling you. But see, curium, right, works the same way as, and that's proven in that study, as the dog, right, and the 144 dogs, which is, there's thousands of gilmedies out there. There's thousands of these gilmedies out there. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And where were those headlines we were going to run into? Okay, let's run through these headlines. Fears marine life is being poisoned. Well, we done the expeditions for life. I'll cover that hopefully at the end of it. I cover it all the time, but. And cigarettes I just smoked are, don't have 7,000 chemicals, it's just tobacco. That's right, your cigarettes have 7,000 chemicals. Okay, so. Um, we've seen an extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean. An extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean. And just to give you some quick context before we hit the headlines, was that's a depiction of the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, an accurate one. And the arrows I put there to, as a depiction of where we went for 260 days and 15,000 miles in a little zodiac. And instead of finding a wealth like we know normally existed in British Columbia, an incredible documented, as you can see by the names there, of wealth throughout the entire coastline, it was naked. This is me on the beach there with the little zodiac. It was naked in the same spot. This is the Haida Gwaii, Queen Charlotte Islands. But that picture is emblematic of anywhere in British Columbia, of everywhere in British Columbia. That is British Columbia. Now, that is missing. And you would starve to death. You and your friends and your family and your, and your budgie bird would starve to death right there. Because it's not full of life anymore. It's not something you would want to covet anymore. It's not incredible anymore. It's not like all these pictures I'm showing you. Now it's naked. Now it's all gone. The color like it used to be, like that, like that, is down to this and this and that. So let's get into those headlines with that context that we do really truly got an extinction event playing out. But let's show the preamble to that. Now the impact of cesium, well curium like I was just showing you is the one we're worried about. Cesium is just a tracer, but this is how they they set the stage to, to deceive you, manipulate you, and trick you. They only talk about the, the tracers. And most people have no concept of iodine and cesium as tracers. But what that means to the academics they just look at that and they can read through everything. They understand all the other isotopes and they laugh because you don't. They giggle because you're in ignorance and, and that you're illiterate when it comes to nuclear. A lethal threat. This is the Times. And a threat to life, uh, August the 5th, 2013. And Fukushima Daiichi has contaminated the biggest body of water on the planet and radioactive leaks to harm marine and, and human life in the whole Pacific Ocean. See, once again, they talk about cesium, but we're worried about curium. We're worried about americium. We're worried about neptunium, plutonium, 
because we had breeder reactors in Japan. This is not like Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a candlestick. Chernobyl is still bad, don't get me wrong. Terrible, horrible, unbelievable, unimaginable to the three million children that Kofi Annan was talking about in Belarus at the United Nations in 2000 on the podium with permanent disabilities or that all the orphanages of the deformed children from Chernobyl and Belarus, etc., etc. But it's nothing compared to Fukushima. Fukushima has many melter reactors, many reactor cores missing from the, the common spent fuel pool, 9 million pounds just there alone. Each reactor was killing 5 million pounds every 18 months. That's 282,000 rods. Each reactor had 3,840 uh, assemblies. Each assembly, each assembly has 80 rods. Each rod is 18 pounds and 12 feet long. And they're full of uh, mixed oxide fuel in number three. So they were blended like you would put moonshine into the punch bowl. The reactor fuel, which is already reclaimed plutonium uranium and uranium. Remember, and uranium is not just plutonium in the mixed oxide fuel. It's, put, it's reclaimed uranium-235. Radioactive water is pouring out. She has a better headline anyway. I hate the ones with bleeding, and I hate the ones with leaks, which is what most of the media says, right? It's disgusting. It's despicable. It's yellow journalism at best. There's three melter reactors. If your child was down there, you'd be saying, I don't want my child here about a three melter reactor, but when you're telling us, you say a melted reactor in Japan. When concerning that earthquake last night on the 14th of April 2016 in the south end of Japan, all the media was reporting it was similar to the one in 2011 that had a meltdown in Fukushima. There was three 100% meltdowns, and now we know the fourth one is all gone. That's the same thing as a meltdown. The fuel pool is a meltdown. If the fuel pool catches fire, that's a meltdown. That's the reactor core. It has to be stored for millions of years because it's not like a banana or a potato chip. Radioactive water reached 3,200 kilometers east of Fukushima. This was a plume they emitted to. A single plume, she's all they've ever emitted to, and they kept that alive alive. That lie alive even in 2012, at the end of it. But the ocean currents at five miles per hour. Hang on. Kurosha current at 5 miles per hour, 24 hours a day times 45 days. 5 times 24 times 45 means it's in California and I'm Canada and Alaska and everywhere else. But the jet streams came across in just a couple of days. The jet streams don't need, like these buckyballs, we talk about a lot of sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, little nuclear engines. They don't need a jet stream. Right? They don't need no jet stream. Remember, the tsunami came through that country. We'll come back to the headlines very quick. This is where all the people died. It's not just there. It was 15 reactors because the power plants are right in the same spot where thousands of people died. And they died because they were chewed up. They were wrecked. They were killed and slaughtered. And that there was no way to avoid it. And that the people left behind have been lied and manipulated and deceived and murdered by the nuclear industry who told them there was nothing to worry about. Who told them it was like a banana. Who told them it was harmless. It's not, how do you get power into a nuclear power plant when it looks like that? And then that's why all these people died in the red and the ones are missing in the yellow. But there's all the power plants. You got 30 million bags. But there's over 15 reactors, and the governor had said 10 of them should be dismantled immediately. Let's come back to the headlines. Boop, boop. And so radioactive water reached it, whatever. But these are just alluding to what I'm telling you. Up to 93 billion beckles a day, still leaking. Yeah, but 93 beckles are what? 93 beckles of this, cesium. What about all the, the thousands of other radioactive isotopes? particularly the curium, who gives a frig about the cesium outside of the fact that it's a tracer? But they, because that's what you're fed so much, that's all anybody really knows how to repeat. Talk to any journalist, they'd be lucky if they can even pronounce it, let alone tell you anything extra. Human health is first reason listed for a study, but they never bother telling you about the study. 
They hid it away. The REAEA expert predicts radioactive cesium will occur across the Pacific to the west coast of the U.S., Canada, one or two years. But the corrosion travels at five miles per hour here in 45 days. And every day behind it was another plume. And so there was a plume right across the ocean in the atmosphere, right across the continent, and a plume right through the ocean. Now symmetrically throughout the entire ocean. But the models that they show you are based upon a single release from a single reactor not from unit 3, not from unit 4, not from unit 1 with the detonations that are visible, but from unit 2 where you couldn't tell. And he said it was venting. But how do you get in and vent something when your country looks like that? When, when you've got thousands of people dying throughout the country, how do you run in and connect the wire when it looks like that? How do you connect power like that? How are you going to get in there even now? How do you get in there like that? So to come out and tell you that, oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no, you know, the, um, hang on. Plankton is missing. That's the basis of the food chain, the oxygen chain, the carbon sequestering chain is the biggest production of oxygen on the planet. And a glass of salt water, a glass of salt water, just a drinking glass of salt water out of your ocean would normally have 75 to 100 million phytoplankton. They're actually missing. Because the radiation is so strong, it pops them like a popcorn. 75 to 100 million in a glass of water, you can't see it. But there's another billion creatures in that glass of water, you can't see that either. And you put a radioactive atom from Fukushima, from mixed oxide fuel in there, it'll kill everything there. It won't sequester in anything. Because even if it does sequester, it's pulsing out of the glass and pulsing over there, or pulsing over here. Every second. And so everything in his way is getting pounded. You're talking about one cells. You're talking about photoplankton that are a single cell. But see, other things about like rock cod, like a lean cod, or, or a gray cod, say, can have, um, or an oyster can have 12, 12 million eggs. And a cod could set 700 million eggs. And blah, 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 blah. Okay. They're considered photoplankton until they get to a bigger stage. Right? Then there's zooplankton and everything else. So the food chain starts at the phytoplankton. A nuclear power plant are boiling a million gallons a minute. That's 16 million glasses. 16 million times a billion creatures. But each glass, like do the math on that and tell me how clean and green and carbon free nuclear is. Over 3 million fish dead inside of a one nuclear power plant's water intake. 3 million fish outside of it. Salmon and everything else. No, no, nuclear is clean, green, too cheap to meter, Dana. Oh. <laughs> Continue to hit the shores of U.S. and Canada until the very end of time. It's not going to turn to fury dust in decades. Morons. Idiots. But it's impossible to remove the molten cores for hundreds of years, if ever. No, it's not. We produce 4,300 peer review studies every day in North America every day publish three a minute. If we took all that horsepower, all those universities, all those institutions and professors that we pay for, that all gets locked up beyond the paywalls of else for Springer and Wiley, the three biggest publishers on the planet, gets the copyrights. They publish it, 12 people reads it, it's locked up beyond a paywall, you can't get access to it. Don't understand it? Here's pre-Fukushima tritium studies coming up. We'll come back to the headlines very quick. Pre-Fukushima studies all around the world. And they also showed the risk of leukemias for exposure to tritium. Think about that one. And then think about the new drinking water standards for North America are 7,000 becquels a liter of 3H man-made tritium. But then think about pre-Fukushima studies. i got to cover this a bit better. Think about pre-Fukushima studies right around the world. And there's all kinds of them right around the world showing one to two to three becquels per liter per hundred liters per cubic meters, which is a thousand liters. Throughout the world, there's all kinds of studies. I'm just flashing through so you can understand the kind of material I'm talking about. But these are the synopsis. These are locked up beyond a paywall. You paid for these studies, the majority of them, and they're locked up beyond Elsevier, Springer, and Wally's paywalls. But anyway, look at Canada. All the studies showed that you would get around 
three back walls, one to two, three back walls, pre-Fukushima, pre-Chernobyl. Canada, Great Lakes, let's bring it up just another way, it was 10 back walls, 1982, 84, 87, 93. There's jack shit. They had an accident. It diluted down to nothing. Now they have a drinking water standard where you can have 7,000 beckles. Because the nuclear industry is insane. They can murder everybody they, they won't admit to it. And they, and they pretty well now have. They can destroy everything they have. They can capture your government with lobbyists with your own money. They take all that money from you and make lobbyists to come out and bludgeon your politicians and give them handfuls and suitcases of cash to keep nuclear alive and pretend it's like a banana and potato chip and walk in the sunshine for just another couple of years. You kill the Pacific Ocean like I showed you earlier in the documentation. But like I say, once again, Canada, 10 beckles. The rest of the world was the same thing. Jack shit. Now it's everywhere. Now they're dumping it into the oceans in Japan today. And the pre-studies show it was harmless. Like in the context of how much was there before. Now look at it. Now we have strontium as a drinking water, artificial radionuclides. This is Canadian Health Drinking Water Standard right there. World Canadian Health uh, Drinking Water Standards. Look it up on the internet. But at the same time, they're rolling out and telling you that there's so much natural out there. Don't worry about the man-made because there's not very much. But it only takes an atom to give you a cancer. But a cancer takes a long time to manifest and get diagnosed. And all the other diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, and autism, passed down to your children, diabetes, and everything else will show up long before the cancer. But how are you going to relate that to cancer? That cancer or that autoimmune deficiency to something that happened to you from Fukushima or something that happened to you from Chernobyl or something that happened to you because you live next to a nuclear power plant where if you're within 15 miles minimum, studies were shown that were only done that section only, that there's six times more breast cancer, 22 times percent more leukemia, killer leukemia for children if you live within a short distance of a nuclear power plant. But if you've done studies all the way up to 50 miles and looked at diabetes and looked at Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, then you really get the picture. Then you really start understanding it. Then you appreciate why they tell you it's like a banana and a potato chip. But ask Dr. Gilmetti about his puppies. Huh? 144 and it took a couple of years and they all died. Why? Because Gilmetti used ionizing radiation. He didn't use bananas or potato chips. Yeah? Yeah. Let's keep going while we wind her down. Wow, where did all that time go? Let's bang off the rest of those headlines. So I can get them and give her some more in there for the next show on Monday. It's Friday, that's right. Flow contamination plant will be virtually impossible to stop. Not will be, it is. And that's 2013 and it didn't stop. And like we've done 15,000 miles of this coastline, 260 days, and that documentation is up at the nuclearproctologist.org showing you an extinction event. Showing you a complete that the 4.2 million other species didn't receive the coastline. But I'm a bad person because I don't work for Woods Hole or the University of Vic Vic Victoria and tell you it's like a banana or a potato chip or walking in the sunshine. Yeah? Because I'm not out there lying to you, manipulating and deceiving you and tricking you. Look at your bottom sentence. What are you doing, Dana? Get back with the program. Though serious, these titles pale compared to the abundance of radioactive substances. Bottom sentences. Naturally present in seawater such as uranium. That's harmless. It's irrelevant. Potassium is good for you. This is the, the, this is the very basis of life on Earth. But you're being tricked and deceived because of Fukushima to think that Fukushima doesn't matter. And that is nothing compared to Chernobyl. You're, that's what that shows you. Look at it one more time before I get rid of it. Like it drives me batty. And people are saying, look at the top center yellow, Chernobyl, 85 petabyte wells, and Fukushima 10 to 30, and direct 3 to 30. Do you got any idea how mentally retarded these people are? Chernobyl was one third the size. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, for Christ's sakes. Fukushima's three. 100% meltdowns and all the reactor cores on the roof are gone and then here's Woods Hole. That's Woods Hole. Are you going to hold them accountable? Are you going to get in their face? 
You're going to catch them when they're lecturing and, haul, and call them on it? And say, look, all the natural radiation in the ocean would only take 70 pounds of man-made stuff. Man-made. And do you think there's 70 pounds missing from that creature right there when there was tens of millions of pounds on the roof, 5 million pounds in the reactor? Do you think 70 pounds might have got out of that? Stop yelling, Dana! So frustrated with the lawyers. Telling you it's like a banana. You can't have a conversation with anybody because they say, I thought it was like a banana. Well, a scientist said it was like a banana, Dana. Why would I want to listen to you? Because these people are mad. These people are out of control. These people are maniacs. These people have a degree and actually know better. They know different. They're there. It's they're like pow in your face. Every time they tell you that. When CNN puts that up there and don't have another narrative there, they're punching you in the mouth. They're spitting on you. They're raping your loved ones. They're murdering you by doing that to you. You sit there and take it. Put the other one up your arse. That was good for me. May I have another? When you got to liquidate your assets, you remember here who was here fighting for you? Toot and nail. Day after day. No matter what. When you took me down, I was fighting to get back up and running again. Ten computers later, in less than two years, I'm still here. Arrested, demonized, vilified, marginalized in the media. I'm still here. Tormented and, ch and chased and harassed and vilified on the, on the internet by the nuclear PR firms. I'm still here. Ostracized. Ostracized from the alternative media. I'm still here. Except for Jeff Rintz. Thank Jesus, somebody's call, call, carrying me. If it wasn't for Jeff, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But then he's been following Fukushima and pushing as hard as he can. He's not an expert on it. He only, like he, he's there for the conversation, but he doesn't know. He's trying. But he makes all the simple mistakes like like I made and anybody else was made. But I kept going until I understood it perfectly. Till I know for sure. We covered 9,000 headlines before I went on the ocean. Anyway, that's all I got. I'm just going to start screaming again here in a second if I'm not careful. Thanks for everybody. I'm just coming to say good day to everybody. It's Friday. I'm going to be working all weekend trying to get back up so I can make the little puns. So I can do it a little, um, you know, how I, how I show up with the guitar. I wanted to be able to show up and little interjection so I don't end up raving while I'm sitting right here. We'll bring up the other camera. Hugs for everybody. Hi, Shani again, which is Kate, uh, Elaine. Jan Brooks. Yeah, thanks, Jan. Hopes everybody has a great weekend. PLT, White Spiral, Chris, Hyperboreal. Thanks, everybody. Kathy. Just cruising, checks and balances. And everybody else, Albert and Kate from Fukushima Hounds and LA and everybody I don't get Pam. And Am is out there, I'm sure. I seen her earlier. And there she is. We got everybody else that I'm trying to find. Kay and anybody I don't say is I don't have my glasses on, so it gets a little tough for me. Andrew, thank you everybody. Daniel and Atom. Hugs for everybody. That's the stream. That's all we got. This is we can't be any more rougher, tougher, wacky moly than what we do here anyway. We'll bring up the other camera, that guy. We say that we always try our best to give you real information. We covered nine thousand headlines before we went on the ocean, covered fifteen thousand miles of coastline when we did. We take it to the extremes all the time. That's who we are, that's what we do. We get the documentation and we don't take no for an answer. When we got the facts, we share it with you. I'm Dana Durnford, proctologist.org. Find a higher quality at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. Hugs for everybody.